name is uh, Andrew. I'm from Advanced School Driving. We're going to go through your air brakes test now. Okay? So the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my needles are below 90 before I begin my test. I'm going to go ahead and pump it down. Make sure I'm clearly below 90. I'm going to tell the examiner now that I've got two gauges here. I've got an upper and lower gauge. I'm going to use the top gauge as my primary throughout the test. And this is the gauge that I'm going to use for all of my readings. Okay? Now I can see that I'm clearly below 90. And I'll just to go ahead and give some RPMs up to about 11 or 1200 until my engine cuts out. I can do that by I see when the needles stop moving or sometimes you can hear a noise but the main thing you want to look for is the needles stop rising. I've reached cutout. My primary is at 120 PSI. This is a good test because it cut out before reaching 130 PSI. Okay, so now I'm gonna perform my cut-in test. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna engage my brake and I will release it. Count about eight seconds to see when the needle rises. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, my needle started to rise. It began to rise a little bit under 100. So I'm going to call it 99, it started to rise. That's a good test because it cut in before reaching 85 PSI, okay? My next test is going to be my applied pressure test. So I'm going to go ahead and build my air back up to maximum before I begin this test. First step to this is I'm going to put the truck into gear with the clutch all the way to the floor. Any forward gear is okay. I'm going to go ahead and go with first. I'm now going to turn the truck off. And now since the vehicle is in gear, when I release both my brake valves here, I'm not going to roll. Make sure you hold them back in. Make sure they don't pop out. Now what I'm doing is I'm waiting for my needles to completely stabilize or stop moving. Okay, my needles have uh, stopped moving. I'm going to go ahead and engage my brake and hold it. My primary gauge is at 90 PSI. I'm going to go ahead and begin counting for one minute. During this minute, you want to make sure that your foot doesn't move up or down. You want to keep a nice steady pressure on the brake pedal. As the minute is approaching, I know that when the minute's finished, I want to make sure I don't release the brake yet. I want to explain some things before I do that. All right, a minute has passed. My primary is still at 90 PSI. This is a good test because I did not lose more than four pounds of pressure within one minute. I can go ahead and release the brake now. Okay, so now we've done the cutout, we've done the cut in, we just did the applied pressure test. The next test I'll perform is a low air warning test. So I want to make sure I turn the ignition on, leaving the engine off. Waiting for all my buzzers and lights to relax a little bit here. Now I'm going to go ahead and engage my brake down until I hear a light or a buzzer come on. In this truck's case, it's going to be both. All right, my low air warning has just activated. It's just a little bit under 75 PSI, so my primary is at 70 PSI. This is a good test because my low air warning device came on between 55 and 75 PSI. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the truck, make sure you're in gear, make sure the brakes are still released, I'm going to do my pop-out test. So I turn the key off right now so it doesn't make an annoying buzzer the whole time. 
And all I'm going to do is I'm going to keep pumping my brakes down until both these valves pop out for my spring brake test. Okay. Okay, my uh, both valves have popped out. My primary is just a little bit above the 25 mark. So I'm going to go ahead and say that my primary is at 28 PSI. This is a good test because my pop out occurred between 20 and 45 PSI. That's going to go ahead and conclude your air brakes test. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go through your in cab inspection now. We just performed our air brakes test. So the first thing I'm going to check on my in cab inspection is my parking brake test and my service brake test. Uh, you can go ahead and ask your examiner if they want you to perform that test or verbalize it. I'm going to go ahead and just verbalize it for you now, okay? First thing you want to do is make sure your uh, PSI is all the way built up to maximum, and then you want to make sure both brakes are engaged. Then I'm going to go ahead and put the truck into gear by engaging the clutch, letting go of the clutch very slowly and making sure the truck does not move when both brakes are applied. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process with a tractor brake pressed in, testing the trailer brake, making sure we don't pull forward again. Then I reverse my nose by setting my tractor brake, releasing my trailer brake, pulling against it again. After I've tested that, it would be a good test of both brakes held together and separately, okay? On my service brake test again, I'll put it back into neutral, build it back up to maximum, build my air all the way up again, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and release my brakes, pull forward about five miles an hour. When I'm doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and engage the clutch, engage the brake nice and softly, come to a stop. During the stop, I'm gonna have my palms open on the side of the wheel, and I'll be looking for any pulling to the left or the right, any delay braking or any noises that I'll be listening for, okay? I'm gonna start going through the parts and inside of the cab. Now I'm gonna start out from left to right the best I can, checking our mirrors, making sure that they're adjusted properly, they're not cracked, broken, in good condition. Checking my entire windshield and my windows here, make sure they're clean. No uh, cracks that are gonna impede my vision, no illegal stickers that are gonna impede my vision again. Making sure they work properly. Checking our um, windshield wipers here, making sure they're flush to the window. They move up and down, the rubber's not rotted away or missing as well. Making sure my switch for my wipers work as well, it turns on and off, okay? Coming down to my uh, gauge here, I'm gonna check my oil gauge. This to come on within four seconds after starting the ignition. You wanna make sure it's uh, in between 20 and 60. Coming down to my temperature gauge, you wanna make sure that it's in the operating range, which in this truck is around 170 or 180. Coming over to my uh, air gauges here, I wanna make sure that they don't uh, cut out above 130 PSI, which we checked on our uh, air brakes test. I'm checking my voltmeter here, this digital gauge. It should be between 12 and 14 volts. Okay, so now I'm coming down to my uh, headlights here. It's gonna be on and off, making sure it works properly. My headlights work as well. Making sure that my high beams work on the dash, it indicates, and uh, that my left and right signals work as well, as well as my hazards, okay? Making sure they come on and off as required, okay? Now coming down to my heater and my defroster, I wanna make sure it turns on and off, it's working properly, and everything is good on that. I'm going to go ahead and check my uh, air horn and my city horn. I want to make sure they work properly. Um, I'm not going to do them now in this yard because they're too loud, but I do want to make sure they're working properly on my pre trip okay? And check my seat belt, making sure it's not frayed, not broken. I also want to make sure, very important, the locking, mes locking mechanism works here and it doesn't come out, and everything is working properly on that as well. That's going to go ahead and conclude my uh, in-cab inspection. I'm going to go around the outside inspection now. The first thing I'm going to start with is the truck. I'm checking all my lights in the top, my clearance lights and my ID marker lights. I want to make sure they're not cracked, broken, they're in good condition, and that everything is working properly. Coming down to my headlights here, I'm going to make sure the high beams and low beams are cracked, broken, they're working. The same thing is with my indicator lights on the side there. I don't want those to be cracked, broken, or missing anything that's in good condition as well. We're going to go ahead and head and pop the hood and we'll check the parts of the engine. Technically, you can go in any order you want, but I try to stick to top to bottom. That way, I try not to miss anything because that can be easy to do as you jump around. So I'm going to check all of my hoses and all of my wires. Make sure all of my hoses are not leaking, all the wires are in good condition, and we don't want to have any uh, electrical arcing or anything like that that would cause problems. Coming down to my uh, alternator here, I want to make sure it's in good condition. I'm going to make sure that the alternator belt there, very important, it does not have more than three quarters of an inch play on that, okay? Down here, this uh, piece is called the water pump. I'm going to make sure it's not cracked, broken, it needs to be in good condition and not leaking as well, okay? We're going to come down now to our frame, making sure it's not cracked, broken, it needs to be in good condition. Down here in our suspension we have what's called a spring mount, making sure the bolts are nice and tight, it's not cracked, broken, in good condition as well. 
Down here, we've got our leaf springs, making sure they're not cracked, broken, it needs to be in good condition. Now here on the front, you can see we have two leaf springs, uh, so we could have no damage. If you had four leaf springs, you could have one damage, you're only allowed to have a quarter damage on that. We only have two, so we could have no damage, very important. Coming down here, we're checking our U-bolts, make sure the bolts in the bottom are nice and tight, they're not cracked, broken, and they're also in good condition. Coming up here, we have our shock absorber here, making sure the bolt's nice and tight, we don't have any hydraulic leak in the middle here, and everything is in good working order as well. Coming to our brake assembly now, we're going to check our brake line here, making sure there's no abrasions, bubbles, or cuts. It's in good condition. Checking our brake clamp or our brake chamber here and our clamp. The chamber shouldn't be cracked, broken, uh, leaking any air. It needs to be in good condition as well. Checking our push rod and our slack adjuster, making sure it's in good condition when the brakes are applied on the inside. Um, it could come out no more than two inches. You want to make sure that when the brakes are applied, it's no less than 90 degrees. When they're released, it's no more than 90 degrees, okay? Coming to our um, inside lining and drum, we don't want any bluing or glazing. It needs to be in good condition and everything working properly on that as well. Okay. Coming to our um, tire assembly here, we go with ICD. That stands for inflation, condition, and depth. Okay. You check the inflation with a commercial tire gauge, making sure it's up to manufacturer specifications, which you can find right on the side of the tire. Okay. You want to make sure the condition of the tire is good, so you look for a basic condition of the tire, making sure there's no uneven wear, you don't want any flat spots, no nails or chunks of rubber missing out of your tire as well. Checking the uh, depth of the tire, up here on the front we cannot have recaps and retreads. You can have steering tires only, very important as well. All right, the, um, the depth is no less than 4 30 seconds of an inch up here as well, 4 30 seconds, okay? Coming down to the rim, you want to make sure there's no cracks, no breaks, it's in good condition. All of our lug nuts around here doesn't have any excessive rust on the inside, which would indicate possible looseness. Checking our uh, hub here, you can check that by popping out the cap. You can stick your pinky in there. If it's less than the first indent of your pinky, you need to add 90 weight gear oil, and you can add that right in where you popped out the cap, okay? So we're gonna go ahead, we'll head over to the other side now. On this side, I'm going to start from the top again. We're checking our coolant up here. Um, if you can't see through it like this one, you want to make sure you check it when the engine's cold. We can see through it so we can see our level is okay on this truck, okay? Um, you want to come down, you want to check your uh, air compressor. You want to make sure it's in good condition, not cracked, broken. Everything is working properly. You want to make sure you check your power steering pump, making sure it's not cracked, broken, in good condition as well. You want to... Um, come to your power steering reservoir, making sure it's in good condition, the level is okay, again, you can see through it. If you can't see through it, most trucks have a dipstick right here where you can check that, okay? Checking our oil, right here's our dipstick, we can pull it out, wipe it off, put it back in and pull it out again. If the level's not okay, you can add oil right here as the uh, oil fill, okay? Coming here, this is going to be my steering linkage or steering arm, you can call it whichever you'd like, making sure it's not cracked, broken, needs to be in good condition. Right here is going to be our steering box, making sure again it's not cracked, broken, it needs to be in good condition, everything needs to be working properly on that as well. Okay, so now we're coming and we've got a lot of things that are the same. The tire assembly, the brake assembly, and the suspension assembly are identically the same as the other side. Some examiners like you to go through that again, some don't like to hear it, so you're going to go ahead and ask them. Um, examiner, would you like me to go through my tire assembly, my brake assembly, and my suspension assembly again? Or would you like me to let you know it's the same as what I said on the other side? Okay. Try to keep the time down the best we can. I'm going to go ahead and just say it's the same as the other side. All right. So coming on back, we're going to check our door here. I want to make sure the hinges doesn't hang up. It opens and closes properly. Everything's working properly on that. Inside this um, bay here is our fuel tank. I want to make sure the cap has a chain and a T-bar on it. It's not leaking any fuel from the cap. The rubber straps on the side aren't ripped, torn, or missing, and everything is in good condition as well. I want to make sure that the steps don't have any slippery substances or oil that I'm going to slip on and injure myself. I want to make sure my mirror is bolted firmly to the door and everything is working properly on that as well. Okay? So we're going to slide on back. Inside here is our storage bin. Um, you can either go through this on your in cab or your outside inspection. I like to do my outside inspection just because the bay's here. If you do it on the in cab, that's fine as well. But the first thing I'm check for, obviously, it says right here, is I check my fire extinguisher. Okay? I'm going to make sure that that's rated dated, has a pin through the handle, needs to be in the green and at 10 BC, okay? Inside here also, I should have three reflective triangles for if I break down, I can set those up on the side of the road. And also, I need fuses and breakers for all my lights on the truck in case something goes out, I can go ahead and replace that, all right? Coming on back, 
I'm going to check my uh, electrical line on the top, my airlines on the bottom here, making sure that the red is the uh, emergency, the blue is the service. Um, it shouldn't be leaking, everything should be in good condition, everything should be uh, connected properly on the glad handles as well. Okay, checking my uh, exhaust right here, making sure it doesn't have any excessive soot on my stack. If it did, that could possibly be an exhaust leak. Coming to my uh, catwalk here, making sure there's no slippery substances. Again, it's not, it's bolted firmly to the frame. It's not gonna move because I don't want to injure myself on that. Underneath, I've got a bar going across here. That's called my drive shaft or drive line. You want to make sure it's not cracked, broken. It needs to be in good condition and everything uh, seems to be functioning properly on that, on your inspection. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and come down to our fifth wheel system. Um, I usually start out with my apron up here on the top, making sure the apron's in good condition. Um, you want to make sure it's not cracked, broken, in good condition. You want to make sure the apron, when it's resting on top of the fifth wheel here, that it has absolutely no gap. There should be no gap in between there. You want to make sure that the locking jaws here are wrapped firmly around the kingpin. You can check that by looking down the throat. Not really necessary uh, to do, just make sure you explain that, okay? Coming to our release handle here, making sure it's in the complete pushed in lock position. Um, and it's not gonna be popping out. And you want Obviously you wanna make sure that's locked while you're driving so you don't lose your trailer. Okay, coming to my platform, making sure it's not cracked, broken, in good condition. Making sure all the bolts are nice and tight, okay? Now some trucks here are gonna have a track that comes along here. You can see some teeth and make sure, making sure it's in the lock position. That's called the fifth wheel slide. Um, this truck does not have it, so if I test it in this truck, I would not mention that at all. But if your truck does have it, that's something that does need to be mentioned, okay? We're gonna drop down to our suspension now. There's a few differences from the front. One of the parts that's different is in here we have an airbag, okay? You wanna make sure that on the airbag it's not ripped, torn, it also needs to be in good condition. You're also checking your torque spring, making sure it's in good condition, it's not broken, and everything is working properly on that, okay? The uh, leaf springs and everything else is gonna be the same, check the same as the front. On the brake assembly in the back, we have uh, four brake assemblies, one on each axle and on the other side. Those are checked identically as the front. There's absolutely no difference on that, okay? On the um, tire assembly, there's a few differences we have to go through from the front. You can run recaps and retreads back here, okay? The depth on these tires is now 2 seconds of an inch rather than 4 seconds of an inch. We have dual tires back here, so you wanna make sure you check in between the tires for any debris. And also, our, um, our hub here is sealed. We have an axle seal. We cannot check the level, but we can check to make sure the rim is nice and clean because uh, you don't want that to be leaking because that could possibly leak on some trucks and that would be something that would need to be fixed immediately. Okay. All right, the tires, I've got four axles here, so I'm gonna check the same way, all four axles and, and on the other side as well. On my mud flaps here, I wanna make sure that I rip torn, all the bolts need to be in good shape. I wanna make sure it's no lower than two inches from the ground and no higher than eight inches from the ground, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and jump back and check my brake lights, my signal lights, and my reverse light back here, making sure they're not cracked, broken, and I'd want those to also be in good condition, okay? And as I check those, I'm gonna start checking the lights as they come around on the top of the trailer and also on the front, making sure the front nose of the trailer is not ripped or torn, and all the lights need to be in good working order as well. All right. Also, I'm going to go ahead while talking about that, check the entire side of the trailer, not ripped, torn. All the rivets are going to be in place. My signal light here is not cracked, broken. All my reflectors look good and everything is working properly there as well. All right. Landing gear, I want to make sure that my release arm is in the locked stowaway position, which it is. You want to make sure your sand shoes are high enough off the ground where they're not going to grab onto anything. Checking all my cross members and bars, making sure they're not cracked, broken. They also need to be in good condition, okay? Moving on back. Sometimes with some trucks, you're gonna have some hanging lines here. You wanna make sure those lines are at least 18 inches off the ground. Now our axles back here are set, they don't slide, so our airlines are actually tucked up underneath here. Just make sure they're not leaking, but if they are hanging down, make sure you mention that for your exam. Okay? Coming back on our suspension now. Um, the only difference on the suspension, I know there's a few parts that are different, but at the DMV, the only thing they want you to mention as far as what's different back here is the torque rod, which is on the bottom. This truck, it's kind of difficult to see. It's actually bolted here, it goes back behind the tire. You can't see it, but just make sure you mention that you know it's there. It can't be cracked, broken, in good condition. Everything else on the suspension is checked the same as, uh, as uh, we previously did there in the front. All right, now on the brake assemblies back here, again, we've got forks. We've got two axles here, two axles on the other side. Um, check the same as we checked all the way up to the front, okay? Checking the uh, tire assembly, identical to the second and third axle. Remember, they're a lot different than the first. So we're gonna go ahead and say identically the same, second third axle but we have one difference now um, we can check our hub oil here and we check that the same way as we checked at the front okay 
Again, if your examiner wants you to go through all the differences, make sure you go through those every time. It'll take a long time, but if that's what they want, that's what they want, okay? Coming on back, checking our mud flap here. The same as we check behind the third axle. Checking our entire lights on the top, our lights on the bottom, our signal lights, running lights, and brake lights. Making sure they're in good condition. Also, some people forget to mention checking the, uh, the license plate light, making sure it's not cracked, broken, also in good condition. Making sure our doors open and close properly and not broken. Everything looks good on that, okay? Now, as we come to the very back, and I'm beginning to uh, finish my test here, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I wanna check the entire right side of my trailer the same way as I check this left side of the trailer, because I'm notorious for forgetting to say it's the same as, same as all the way we go back. That would just cover you in case for one moment you forgot to say, checking the axles, the same as the other side for the brake suspension or tires, okay? So that's gonna go ahead and conclude my uh, test.